Hello and welcome to Wonder Dad Gaming. Of course, I am 1176 of Wonder Dad Gaming. Thank you for joining me again. I know it has been a very long time since I've seen you guys last. Um, been very busy with life in general. Um, but, you know, fighting a cold right now. Don't worry about that. Um, coming back, um, going to be bringing back some new stuff to the channel. Um, new reviews coming out here soon. But today, actually what I'm going to go over is I did pick up a new controller. Um, it's right here. This is the um, Fly Digi Apex 4. Um, bought with my own money. I do have a review coming out for this, so um, you, can, you guys can stay around for that. It should be out here in a week or two. Because um, I definitely got a couple of comparisons I want to do with this one. But one thing that comes on this controller that um, a lot of contro pro controllers out there don't have, especially for PC unless you have a PlayStation controller, is adaptive triggers. So the Apex 4 is one of the only other controllers out there that have the electric motors and the triggers that actually act like a dual sense. you know, has the feeling of, like, um, a shooter and stuff like that. So um, what I'm going to do today is we're going to actually go over um, the app and how to, how to do this, how to set this up, because, unfortunately... Because Fly Digi is really big in China, their instructions don't translate well into English. So it took me a little bit to figure out how to turn it on um, and actually get it up and running. Because the old um, app that's meant for this controller um, was you would launch the game through that application. Well, they kind of took that away. So they changed it a little bit. So I kind of want to go over that, how you run it, how you set it up, and... Um, you know, how well it is, is to run. Um, so this is kind of more like a help video because um, I won't lie, I wish there would have been one out there when I was trying to figure this out, but I got it figured out, so I'm going to let you guys know in case you pick up um, the Apex uh, 4. Now, the Apex 3 does have the adaptive triggers as well, but the Apex 4 does a little bit better job at it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get switched over to um, the screen, and we'll go ahead and go over the app and show how this gets this done. So stick with me. Okay. Now we're in the application. So this is, as you can see right up here, this is the, excuse me, the Fly Digi Space Station app. Um, this is, so you're going to want to have this app downloaded when you get the controller, um, set up custom profiles, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get in here real quick. I'm going to minimize this. Okay, so um, when you're in here, like I said, this is the app. You got your different configurations, PC, adaptive trigger screen settings, test, and then config, uh, switch mode because you can run this in switch. Then you got your course, your layout, motion sensor, all of that. But like I said, we'll go over more of that when I do the review for this controller because there is a lot that this controller offers that we're going to have to go over in my actual review. So today, like I said, we're just focusing on the adaptive triggers, which actually they've already engaged. Um, probably because I started that up and I think I'm in racing mode right now. Um, anyways, so you go over here, you'll see adaptive triggers, click on that. Now, all the not all the games come with adaptive trigger support. Um, there's the ones that do and there's the ones that don't. So today, like I said, we're gonna go over the ones that um Basically, I think there's 50 games right now that are available. So you can kind of scroll through here and see all the ones that are available. Um, actually, huh, looks like they added a couple dude, since I've been in here last. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Because uh, this one, Last of Us, was not on here the other day when I was in here. So that's kind of interesting to see. Yeah, Jedi Survivors on here. Um... But the one I'm going to go over this is, is Overwatch 2. Because I play Overwatch, I like it, um, it's a lot of fun. And that's one of the few games I do, even though I do play competitively on a PC, I still like actually playing this controller, especially with the adaptive triggers. So, what you do is you would come into here, and you would actually click the adaptive mode and turn it on. Now, over here, this is the mode character. Now, if you hover over this stuff, um, it'll kind of tell you what it is. Um, but DS mode, that is designed to copy a, um, PlayStation controller. So it's very similar. 
And you'll actually notice that when you're in game, you'll start noticing that um, instead of being like, this is an Xbox layout, that'll actually have um, a PlayStation button layout. So it takes a little bit of issue, especially if you're playing something like Spider-Man or something like that. Now, if you go into a game, say, I know one of these is not, I think it's Fallout. Yeah, Fallout. Um, just had what's called standard mode. Now, this one's actually being worked on. Hold on. There was another one. I sh ah, here we go. Monster Hunter Rise. So, you turn it on here, and like I said, this is standard mode. So, if you have a game, like I said, that doesn't have DS mode, it'll have standard mode. Now, most of the time, the, the this, this program will scan your computer and try to figure out where the game is and stuff. But if you notice right here, now, this game I do not have installed currently. Now, if I did... You would actually go into here, click this, find the file, and then click add. Because actually what it's doing, it's actually putting a mod inside the con in the game itself. Um, now, for some reason, if you do have issues with um, activating the mod and it like, messes up your game, you can click this right down here. And it'll uninstall that mod so it won't. So you can basically like reset. But anyways, going back to... Overwatch 2. I have it turned on. Now, even though it says Steam, you do not have to have Steam to run to actually do this. You can launch, you know, Battle.net like you want to. You know, you can use your own launchers. You don't have to use the specific launcher that it does show on the screen. So once you actually launch the game, um, I'm not gonna really bring it because right now we're just showing the app. Um, I got a lot of stuff on my page right now, but um, basically what happens is launch the game like normal you'll see over in the corner it'll pop up it'll say fly digi apex 4 connected and it'll say adaptive triggers um activated and then you go in the game and then your adaptive triggers will be working so like i said today was kind of a short small short video um like i said it took me a little while to kind of figure out why um i couldn't get it working you know, I was trying to figure out, like, how do I launch it through here, all this other stuff, when, no, you don't actually launch it through here. You just got to make sure this is running. Um, now, I have had times where I left this turned on, and I went into a game, and this wasn't up, and it's still activated. So, I, it's, I mean, let's be honest. It's a, it's kind of a, a hack, in a way, to get adaptive triggers on a non-PlayStation controller. So, there's a little thing that's a little bit weird, but it works. Um, so, like I said, if you do have the Apex 4 and you're trying to get the uh, adaptive triggers to work, that's what you need to do. Easiest way to do it, like I said, bring up the app, turn it on, start your game. Just leave this running. That's all you got to do. You don't have to launch it through here. Just, just make sure it's on. Now, if you want to go back to not using adaptive triggers, because one thing I found with adaptive triggers, for some reason, my back buttons don't want to work. Don't know why, but it's only when I'm running DS mode. Now, if it's a standard um, adaptive trigger game, like a standard mode, my back buttons work. But if I'm using a, um, if I'm playing, like I said, in DS mode, my back buttons don't want to work. Don't know. Maybe it'll be fixed up in an update. I don't know. I hope so, because that'd be nice, especially when I'm playing Overwatch. But say you want to go back, you don't want to use... Um, DS mode, next time you play, you just go in here, turn it off, close the app out. It won't activate the next time you go in. But you have to make sure you shut it off. Because even if you, if you close the app and it's turned on, the next time you go play it, it'll be on. So if you don't want it on, start the app up, shut it off. So, well, that's really all I got today. Um, like I said, nice, short, for the point video. Um, like I said, if you got one of these controllers, um, you know, drop me in the comments. How do you like it? But I also will have a review coming out for this very soon. Um, I also have the Vader 3 I'm going to do a review on. Um, I'm going to do a couple of new pro controllers. Um, some ones that I've had some kind of like long-term um, experience with that I want to go over and see like what's going to be best bang for buck. So, well... Again, I am Lemon76, and thank you for joining me again. I um, hope to catch you guys on the next uh, live stream review videos. Um, I know you guys watch um, um, Carhartt, uh, Carhartt, oh my God, 317. Um, 
and you watch his uh, um, races on Thursday. But I will be coming back here soon and starting my live streams again. So um, I hope to catch you guys on a couple of those live streams. Um, should be a lot of fun. But until then, uh, I'll catch you guys next, again on the next review video. Again, I am 1176. Thanks for joining me today. Catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Oh, wait. <laughs> Peace.